I'm Dr. Bruce Martin. I'm, I'm now Emeritus Professor of Plant Pathology at, at Clemson, so I'm retired. I'm an I'm a, a official geezer, but uh, I've spent 31 years at Clemson, kind of went, went up through the ranks, uh, started in field crops and turf, and eventually morphed into turf pathology 100%, and have been doing turf, and nematode, turf disease and nematode research and extension for the last you know, 30 years. Well, my experience with, with Maxtema and Navicon uh, probably started with the basic uh, molecule, of just the Maxtema uh, originally, and I think the first trials that I did with biology were, were actually looking at sensitivity to Bermuda grass uh, before we really got into the actual disease control trials. but. Uh, so I recall doing a, a pretty extensive, extensive trial on different cultivars of ultra dwarf Bermuda grass to look at growth regulation. And we saw none. We had, we had triticonazole in there as a, as a standard that we knew would growth regulate, and it did. And so it was, you know, I, they wouldn't tell me what the chemistry was, but I had a little bit of an inkling uh, based on that trial. And, and then we did uh, dollar spot trials on bent grass and brown patch trials and of course uh, the Navicon having the, uh, the addition of paraclostrobin controlled the brown patch very well. And, and then the Maxtema uh, methantrifluconazole, I've learned to pronounce that correctly I think, uh, controlled everything else. And uh, you know, so we did extensive trials on bent. Um, we did safety work on bent grass in the summertime, and at my location in Florence, South Carolina, I've always kind of, you know, affectionately called it a hellhole for diseases because it, it is so hot and humid in the summer. So if something works there in the summertime, it's probably going to work anywhere. And if it doesn't injure grass there in the summertime, it's probably not going to injure grass anywhere. And we saw no injury. And that was at, uh, we did this, some of these trials at 2x, what has turned out to be the label rate, which would mimic a, a spray overlap. Uh, we did spring dead spot work, a major root disease, and have gotten outstanding spring dead spot control with both Maxtema and Navicon. And then uh, fortunately, we've also gotten really good control of take all root rot with, the, with both products. So uh, that's, that's pretty much what I've worked with on the southern diseases. The DMI chemistry that we've had since the 1970s, Bailaton was one of the first products. Those have always been outstanding fungicides in the broad sense. They're really good for, for root disease control, for the ascomite seat diseases like, like take-all take -all patch or take-all root rot. So having uh, a new molecule in that chemistry is not a bad, a bad thing. Uh, the fact that we've seen no growth regulation out of it is icing on the cake, really, and sets it totally apart. Now, I haven't done this work, but the fact that those that have and, and show it to work on DMI-resistant dollar spot uh, populations is another major breakthrough, you know, and, and so that, that and it's just its broad spectrum of activity. So in the cool season grasses, it's, it's very good for anthracnose. And that safety, when, when you're dealing with anthracnose on POA, that safety is a huge thing for, for us. So it gives us a lot of flexibility on where to use the chemistry. Well, I'm, I'm confident because we've done the trials. <laughs> And we've done, this past year, we did, uh, we did trials on golf course greens that were under play. So not just at the experiment stations. Um, I had trials down at Sea Pines, had trials at Quail Hollow. Uh, these were under play and we compared those to uh, tebuconazole in this case. And we looked at them at 2x the label rate and saw no problems. And this was multiple sprays fall and spring, which is typically when we see problems on Bermuda grass. And in bent grass, the typical time we'd see problems is in the middle of the summer. And we did those trials two years ago, 
in Florence. Uh, you know, with our summer temperatures typically getting in, you know, maintaining in the mid 90s and occasionally peaking up into the, the 100s and saw no issues at all. So I'm pretty confident we're just not going to see those. And my colleagues that have done similar trials, we all agree. So as we, as we compare notes, it's been a very consistent story of, of safety. Well, I think there's been uh, this fear, uh, and, and sometimes rightly so, of damage at, at different times. Or, you know, one of the things we noticed with, uh, with one of the DMIs that we were testing uh, was that uh, ball marks wouldn't heal very, very quickly. So that's not a, you know, that's not a killer, but you'd rather not see that. And one of the, de the demo we had at Quail Hollow was actually on a chipping green. And we noticed uh, that that green was under play where we had Max Steamer or Navicon at one or two X the label rates. We saw those ball marks heal quickly where we had the competitive DMI. We didn't see them heal quickly. Uh, so that's one, you know, one thing. Uh, it might be that you want to use it for fairy ring control at core aerification because sometimes core aerification will help us get that chemical down where it needs to be. And you can now do this with a DMI and not worry about those heel, those holes uh, staying open for very long. So, it, you know, again, to me, it kind of goes to the flexibility of timing. Uh, with no fear that you're going to set that grass back. Well, the big diseases that we've always struggled with uh, have been spring dead spot and now take all root rot. And in the southeast, you know, when you get down into the Florida and the Gulf Coast and South Texas, take all is, is a chronic disease. Uh, the chemistry that we've depended on has been the QOI chemistry. So. Um, that works okay, <laughs> and DMI chemistry, which to date has worked okay. Uh, we put programs together and we could manage that disease pretty well, but when we started testing Maxtema, uh, typically I'm getting 20-30% better disease control with either Maxtema or Navicon. Uh, and that's actually for both diseases. And so it turns out that some chemistry um, will not control spring dead spot like QOI chemistry, but it will have an influence on take all root rot. Um, the DMI chemistry will control both diseases, <laughs> take all and, uh, and uh, spring dead spot. With spring dead spot, uh, I've probably done five or six trials on greens and, and just started doing trials on fairways and uh, We've gotten really essentially 100% control with two apps in the spring, which that's a tall order for that disease because it's a devastating root disease. And uh, it's been the best fungicide I've ever seen for, for either disease. Talking about the Max Tema, the Navicon has given us equal control. Yeah, I think the, the timing for spring dead spot control um, is a relatively new, uh, new thing that the, the southern pathologists have honed in on uh, looking at soil temperature targets. We've had those targets for diseases like summer patch or for take-all patch in bent grass, summer patch in POA. And uh, we've, we've really never had a target. We've almost gone with calendar dates. <laughs> Uh, where we're trying to get two applications in before the first hard frost, that kind of thing. Well, it turns out if we wait until the soil temperatures start to cool down to 70 degrees and then target our first app, we, we've never really lost control by doing that and frequently we'll gain control. And if we go too early, we may lose control. We may start to, we, we've, uh, it probably has to do with root growth dynamics and when the new roots are starting to be formed and it takes actually a cooling of soil temperature taking that stress off that Bermuda and it'll start to put new roots out and those are the roots you want to protect and, and knock that inoculum down then and follow up with at least one more application 30 days later. That's been the formula that most people have, have gone with and it's, it's worked very well certainly work with Max Steema and Navicon. 
Well, Maxtema is better than Rubigan, and, and Rubigan, if you remember, <laughs> Rubigan was one of those fungicides that was kind of a love-hate relationship, and, and uh, they hated it because sometimes they didn't get good control. It was an iffy uh, proposition, particularly on fairways. On putting greens, we used to use it for POA control, and the rates to control POA were 12 ounces. It, it, you'd, you'd split it you know, three apps of four ounces or two apps of six ounces, man, that's a slug of fungicide and it would lock those greens down from a growth regulation standpoint. And that's where the hate part came in. Uh, a lot of, and, and if the wrong guy was on the sprayer and he's overlapping, you know, you had some horror stories that, that you'd hear about. And uh, that was the deal, but, and yet Rubigan was the best we had. Uh, when Rubigan was withdrawn, uh, we started casting around for other options and we, we landed on tebiconazole and, and tebiconazole is pretty rough on Bermuda grass. Propiconazole is pretty rough on Bermuda grass. We can get, particularly on greens, on fairways it's okay, but on greens it's not okay. And uh, it really wasn't until um, Lexicon, Velista, some of those uh, SDHI chemistries came along that we started to get something that wouldn't injure the Bermuda grass and give us pretty good spring dead spot control. Well, it turns out, at least in my trials, I can't control take all root rot with SDHI fungicides. So here's the advantage of, of Navicon and, and Maxtema is that we, we can get both diseases and the timing is about the same. Um, and it may be that for take-all we're going to do a spring application because take-all can continue right on into the spring and into the early summer. Well, that locks in very nicely with the spring fairy ring program. And if you have turf safety there, then you can knock yourself out and uh, you've got the makings of a pretty good program. And I've done all my dollar spot trials on Crenshaw uh, bent, so it's, as, as most folks know, it's the dollar spot magnet. The only downside is you can't get the seed anymore, so that, that green is kind of sacred at the PD, PD station, but uh, I'll be turning that green over uh, soon. But uh, um, we've gotten at least 28 days of control out of, out of a single app, and that would be either curative or preventive control. We've actually gone in with Crenshaw, honestly, if I'm not controlling dollar spot in December, I'm going to be behind the eight ball in March, you know, when most people start their dollar spot trials. So I would have to knock down the disease a little bit with with Dacanil and a little propiconazole or something to start a, a program. Uh, we've done you know, I've done so-called uh, preventive treatments where I might have only $10 spot uh, infection centers in a three by five, which really isn't preventive, that's curative. It's already starting to roll. Um, and we've got an outstanding knockdown. Really within about seven days, those, those spots are gone. And then it's clear sailing for about 28 days. And after that, you'll, depending on the rate, of course, uh, you'll start to see a little bit of, of rebound, you know, a little bit of infection. So that's, that's as long a control as I would expect out of any fungicide. Well, your question about Navicon having the intrinsic, the paraclostrobin in, of course that adds uh, the one weakness of Maxtema is that it doesn't control brown patch very well. And so you put in the paraclostrobin and you've got, you've got that covered. And, uh, but you also had the plant health benefits. And we've seen that in the spring green up, in the spring dead spot trials. Uh, as we look at spring green up, uh, the, the Navicon is always a little bit better from the standpoint of that vigor of that grass coming back. And I've seen that with Lexicon over the years and I, I've seen that with Navicon. So I kind of expect we'd see similar things wherever we saw it with Insignia or with, or with Lexicon or Honor that we, uh, we would see that with Navicon. Be interesting to look at the, uh, the sprigging phenomena with, with Navicon that we've demonstrated with, with Lexicon. That'd be a, a neat trial to do sometime. 
Well, it's, it's having another chemistry, a DMI chemistry, that is working on even DMI resistant strains of dollar spot. I certainly would expect it to work on SDI resistant strains of dollar spot. It gives you a tool to offset that uh, that uh, development of resistant populations. So uh, it's you know it's nice to have that different chemistry that you can rotate to. Um, in my opinion, uh, it's going to need to be managed also for resistance. It is still a DMI chemistry. And uh, we, the resistance problems we've seen with DMI chemistry are not killers. It's just a stepwise uh, loss in control when it happens. Uh, it may never happen with Maxima, who knows. Um, uh, but uh, the potential is there, I think, uh, as a DMI. So we're going to have to manage that resistance. Uh, the fact that uh, your label is going to be written uh, with uh, limited applications that are going to be allowed as a resistance management tool in its own. So folks are going to need to be strategic with it. And uh, that, that's a good thing. But it's, it's great that we've got a new chemistry, even though it's an old chemistry, uh, a new fungicide with unique properties that's going to help us offset the issues that we're, we're starting actually to see with SDHIs. Well, fairy ring, fairy ring in many ways is the most aggravating problem we have in the disease realm. Uh, we've actually had better luck controlling spring dead spot and take off. Fairy ring uh, has been a challenge from day one. <laughs> and, you know, we've, we've used DMI chemistry. Uh, on bent grass, DMI chemistry has been great because we're, we're typically starting to apply that chemistry in the springtime when the growth regulation is not an issue. On Bermuda grass though it is a problem because we're applying that chemistry in the springtime when Bermuda grass in many cases is just coming out of dormancy. So that's a weak point for the Bermuda grass and, and it can be set back. So uh, uh, the trials I've heard of Jim's data, Jim Kern's data, uh, getting excellent control, and I think that was curative control, which is always a little more difficult than preventive control with fairy ring. Um, the safety issue uh, is going to help us a lot in both Ben and Bermuda grass. Uh, I think time will tell on how we would develop a fairy ring program. Um, in, in my opinion, <laughs> Depending on where you are, uh, we're probably up here in the transition zone around Raleigh and uh, most of South Carolina. In many cases, we can probably control fairy ring pretty well with two to three applications and at least get us to the midsummer. But a place like South Florida, where it's raining all the time and the grass is growing, the fairy ring fungi are growing year round also. They really don't have a dormancy period. I think that you're really going to have a challenge there no matter what. And it may take five sprays to control it adequately and also some fall apps to offset that disease. So, but at least we've got something, we've got a, some chemistry we can put down and not worry about injuring the Bermuda grass in those locations. BASF, we create chemistry.